Hi, I'm Kim. And I'm Quinn. And we're bringing you projects and stories from inside the nation's largest hard tech and manufacturing innovation center. Welcome to M-Hub Inside. Bye, Quinn. Hey, Quinn. Hey, Kim. What are you up to today? Uh, we are machining a pallet for holding some stuff in a CNC. And I'm assuming we're doing that for a member. We are assisting a member with upgrading his work holding for making his product, producing his product. And this product is the skateboard that I'm looking at. Yes. So one of our members, Skate Castle, makes uh, accessories and upgrades for electric longboards. Um, what you see here are the motor mounts that are upgraded from what comes on the machine to start with. Uh, there's a couple other products on the table that you can see here. Um, this particular mount that I helped him design uh, holds most of all his products uh, and allows him a little bit higher throughput. Great, so this blank palette is going to become this. Yes, so we've already made one. We tested the design for all of the individual designs that he has, make sure that nothing gets thrown off, there's appropriate work holding, nothing comes loose, all the tolerances are there. Uh, what we're doing is we're gonna make a second one. Uh, the reason we're making a second one is so that before, when you're just running one, you, when it's done, you have to take the time to swap out the stock, flip things over, the throughput is a little bit less because the spindle isn't running. A, making a second one allows for a higher throughput because as this one's done and pulled off the machine, you could put in the second one that already has the stock, it's preloaded, um, and be working on this one to make this into the state that this one was in. So now the spindle is running 99% of the time instead of waiting for things to swap over. So no time wasted. No time wasted. Uh, higher throughput as well. So his old method, he would only hold two per run. Uh, and now with this new design, you can see here, this this would be two stock that, that come off of this. He can hold eight. So it's just a, a lot more coming through the machine. That sounds productive and all good. Productive, so... uh, less, less cost per part, less time per part. So a little bit more money, which is whatever we want. Well, let's get started. Let's make some chips. All right, now let's talk about some more of the technical details of exactly what we're gonna be doing and how we're going to be doing it. What we're using is Fusion 360, which is a CAD CAM rendering simulation software. Um, to actually tell this machine behind me, which is the Tomorok 1100M, uh, exactly how to machine what we want to be machined. Um, in Fusion, we have a exact replica model of the work holding that we're using, as well as the raw palette, um, as well as all of the things that we want to be have removed from it. So what we see here is an exact simulation of what should happen in the machine. The very first thing that's going to happen is going to be fly cutting across the top of the material to make sure everything is nice and flat. A series of drill bits for different holes, different corner reliefs, pockets, things of that nature. Machining out the area where either stock or OP2 fits into for registration, different things of that nature. The whole process should take about an hour and a half. Uh, at the end of that, we should have a almost finished um, object. We are going to then tap and add some threaded inserts for a little bit more robustness to this work holding. So the machine has been set up. Uh, the work coordinate system has been touched off on the top of the vice base. Um, all of the tools have been measured and are loaded in the machine. The G-code is ready to go. All that's left to do is hit cycle start, and we should have a part in about an hour and a half. Our pallet has just come off the machine and it looks fantastic. Uh, what we need to do now is make sure that some of our parts that we've machined on the other pallet fit so that the we know the OP2 is gonna be in the right position. So let's test a couple of those and see how well they work. 
That could not be a better fit. There is absolutely no play in there whatsoever. Same thing. Oh, can't get it out. Same thing, absolutely no play. That was a fantastic fit. Seems our cam did its job. Same thing for the motor mount, absolutely no wiggle whatsoever. Uh, the next job is going to be taking this to our tapping arm, threading these holes so that we can insert and lock into place our threaded inserts. Um, and we will show you that now. How's it going, Quinn? Uh, it's going quite well. Uh, we're at the point where we're just adding some threads to this block so we can put some threaded inserts in here. Looking pretty good. Yeah, you wanna give me a hint? Sure. All right, so this is a tapping arm. Uh, it takes place of hand tapping or sometimes CNC machine tapping. Uh, what we have in here is a clutched chuck, so theoretically at the bottom of the hole, it should stop at the right place or just spin harmlessly. Uh, we have an up, up flute cut um, 3A16 tap in here. Uh, to use this, all you're gonna have to do is press that down to go in reverse. There's a button on the back here. And you can see it's gonna move and drop some fat beats. So if you wanna give it a shot. Let's go. We'll put a little cutting fluid in the hole for you. Give it a shot. All right, away we go. All right, Quinn, feeling good, looking good? Fantastic, good job. Thank you very much for the help. Um, so we can continue to tap the rest of these holes, but I might as well show you guys the next step. Next thing we're gonna do is put some threaded inserts in all these holes. The reason you might be asking why we're using a threaded insert rather than just tapping directly into the aluminum is longevity. Uh, using a steel insert will just make this more durable, the threads won't wear out as quickly, and this will be an asset for a long time to come and not wear out too quickly. Great. Well, speaking of continued use, once we have this wrapped and it's ready to be used, mm -hmm. let's just recap the project and what this will mean for Skate Castle production and how they're going to use the pad. So we started with a blank uh, piece of aluminum that matches the previous pallet. The previous pallet we machined, we tested, we made sure everything worked great. Um, we did some cam uh, to match the exact uh, design of the previous pallet, set up the machine, ran the tool path, uh, machine for about an hour and a half. This lovely, lovely pallet here. You can see it's nice and shiny. It'll never be this clean again. Now he has the ability to run part A, part B, part A, part B with no downtime between swapping parts in the machine. So more skateboards, more longboards. More skateboard parts, more longboards, more people ripping around on the E stuff. Perfect. Cool. So the process for inserting these is simply to thread them in. The tap's already been done by our lovely Line up our hammer pin. Once it's all lined up, simply give it a nice little thunk on the top, and this is now fixed in place. And we're done. And we're done. Successful project. So if you liked this content and want to see other projects like this, M Hub is home to over 11 prototyping shops for product development and manufacturing. So subscribe, like, comment, let us know what you want to see, and Quinn might be able to make it happen. Looking forward to see you guys in the future.